final chapter of our text, chapter 13, looks at developing line item functional and program budgeting systems, and we'll discuss how to create each of these individual types of budgeting systems. Line item budgeting systems are characterized by standardized budget formats, common budget definitions, and structured budgetary process. The time period covered by line item budgeting systems is typically 12 months and is referred to as a fiscal year. Fiscal year tends to follow one of three time frames. January 1st to December 31st, this is used by many nonprofit human service agencies and programs. July 1st to June 30th, 30th, used by many state and local government human service agencies and programs, or October 1st to September 30th, used by federal agencies and programs. Developing a line item budgeting system involves the following steps. Designing a standardized line item budget format, developing common budget definitions and terms, identifying all revenues and expenses, and balancing the budget. Designing the line item budget format. All revenue and expense items are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, so meaning it covers everything. Um, developing common budget definitions and terms. Each category of revenue and expense is operationally defined to provide guidance and ensure uniformity in the treatment of budget items. Step three, identifying all revenues and expenses. The format should include a complete presentation of all anticipated revenues and all proposed expenses. Four, balancing the budget. Line item budgeting system clearly indicates if the budget is balanced or unbalanced. Format facilitates identification of where proposed expenses might be reduced or where additional revenues might be sought to bring the finalized budget into balance. A forced balanced budget is created when management consciously overstates revenues or understates expenses. There is a link between line item functional and program budgeting systems. Functional and program budgeting systems are generally developed at the program level. Creation of functional budgeting systems and program budgeting systems begins with the line item budget. Functional budgeting systems are concerned with the outputs, efficiency, and productivity of programs. Program budgeting systems are concerned with the outcomes or effectiveness of programs. Functional and program budgeting systems have common implementation steps. 1. Developing the line item budget. 2. Determining the agency's program structure. 3. Creating the cost allocation plan format. 4. Identifying direct and indirect cost. 5. Assigning direct cost to programs and indirect cost to the indirect cost pool. 6. Allocating indirect cost and determining the total cost of programs. So again, looking at these different steps, um, number one, you're creating a line item budget that identifies all anticipated revenues and proposed expenses. Two, identifying the number of distinct programs operated by the agency. Three, primary document used to derive functional or program budget from line item budget. Four, every item of proposed expense can be classified as either a direct cost or an indirect cost. Direct costs are those items of proposed expense that benefit only one program. Indirect costs are those items of expense proposed to be incurred for two or more programs, overhead costs, organizational maintenance costs, all operating expenses that benefit two or more agency programs would be under this category of indirect cost. Five, the total cost of a program is the sum of its direct and indirect costs. So that's part of that assigning direct cost to programs and indirect cost to the indirect cost pool. Um, item six, the allocating indirect cost to programs and determining total program cost. This would be when we use allocation cost process. Methodologies or bases most frequently used are total direct cost, direct labor costs, direct labor hours, and direct costing. Allocating indirect costs to programs and determining total program costs. The total direct cost methodology determines each program's share of direct cost, totals all the direct cost, determines the indirect cost rate, and allocates the indirect cost pool to each program using derived indirect cost rate. The direct labor cost methodology is similar to the total direct cost methodology, except instead of finding each program's relative percentage share of total direct cost, each program's relative percentage share of direct labor cost is computed and used as the base. Direct labor costs are staffing costs, include ERE, that are considered direct costs. 
Direct labor hours methodology is similar to the total direct cost and total direct labor cost methodologies, except that each program's relative percentage share of total direct labor hours is determined and used as the base. Direct labor hours are the total annual hours worked by all agency staff that are considered direct cost. Average work year is generally computed at 2,080 hours. Direct costing methodology involves converting indirect costs to direct costs. It requires that a unique measure or base be found and used to allocate each item of indirect cost. Any item of indirect cost can be converted into a direct cost by finding a measure to, dis to serve as the allocation base. So after looking through that fairly quickly, which cost allocation methodology is best? There's no one best methodology for indirect cost. Different methodologies may result in only marginal if any changes in allocation of indirect cost. Total direct cost methodology is, simpl is the simplest approach to implement. It assumes a strong relationship between total direct cost and indirect cost associated with the program. Direct labor cost methodology is considered better when the majority of an agency's programs are labor intensive, so 70% or more of the total budget. Direct labor hours methodology also is also appropriate for labor intensive agencies, particularly when staff are paid at differing rates. Direct costing methodology is considered the most accurate because a relevant basis is used for each item of indirect cost. Some programs use a combination of methods, direct costing for salaries, wages, and ERE combined with another methodology for the remaining costs. Is cost allocation worth the effort? Without cost allocation, an agency does not know the full cost of providing its various programs. Without cost allocation, an agency cannot develop accurate costs per unit of service, the intermediate output, service completion, the final output, or outcome. If an agency does not include indirect cost in the computation of its unit cost, it will underprice services. So looking at functional budgeting systems, Determining the program total cost is required to move from a line item budgeting system to a functional or program budgeting system. Six additional steps are required to create a functional budgeting system. Selecting the program's intermediate output, unit of service measure. Determining the program's intermediate output objective. Computing the program's cost per intermediate output. Selecting the program's final output, service completion measure. Determining the program's final output, service completion objective and computing the program's cost per final output, service completion. Program budgeting systems. The creation of a program budget involves essentially the same steps as the creation of a functional budgeting system. The difference is that functional budget systems step fo steps focus on outputs while program budgeting systems focus on outcomes. So here with program budgeting systems, selecting the program's intermediate outcome measure, selecting the intermediate outcome objective, selecting the intermediate outcome, selecting the final outcome measure, final outcome objective, and the cost per final outcome. So again, you see very similar, a uh, great deal of similarity here other than just the difference between outcome versus output. Okay, with a comprehensive budgeting system, um, we've seen this figure before, but the combination of line item, functional, and program budgeting systems provides a comprehensive view of the operation of human ser services agency and its programs that no one system can provide.